So I got the tier list up here. I got 18 services that came from our uh, VPN chart on our website, which is just objective data about every VPN service. So this is kind of fun and hopefully it's a bit educational. So this is very personal preference on my end. It's really meant to just be Henry's opinion on things. So if you disagree, please let me know what you disagree on. I think it could be a fun discussion. Um, and ultimately, like these all do very similar things. And so I think it's a very just fun, uh, low pressure kind of video. So without further ado, let's get into it. I'm gonna start with AdGuard. So AdGuard VPN, um, I'm gonna start with just putting this in B tier. I guess it's always a little bit hard to start this because it's like, I don't know, I mean, it's, do I wanna put this higher up, lower? So it's kind of just, I'm gonna start with B. Um, AdGuard VPN, what I really like about AdGuard is how it integrates with the AdGuard ecosystem, which if you use, especially on Apple devices, is really nice. I actually do use AdGuard um, for the block list stuff and the ad and tracker protection that it offers within Safari on my iOS device that I use. So if you use iOS, um, you can actually use AdGuard and get a ton of benefit there, but I don't use their VPN. So this isn't one I use, um, but I could see the benefit of using AdGuard VPN if you're in the AdGuard ecosystem, which is pretty nifty. AirVPN, I'm gonna start by putting above because AirVPN has just been kind of a gold standard classic. They actually did have a server seizure that they just announced recently, which kind of made a few people go, huh? Because why did they wait so long to reveal the server seizure, but also they responded to it very well so I don't know it's also interesting how they just revealed this casually in their forum I think there's better ways to announce things like that but either way the facts are AirVPN has a very nice open source client that's cross compatible with every major operating system for desktop I'm a big fan of AirVPN and they do a lot of things right all right next up is CyberGhost and I'm just gonna like I don't know <laughs> okay I'm gonna I'm gonna start with C and it might become a D later depending on how things are looking, but um, not a fan of CyberGhost. It was bought out by one of the, like the mega uh, VPN corporations that are a little bit sus and run by kind of suspicious people. Um, CyberGhost really is lacking some core things that some other providers do get right. CyberGhost, for example, doesn't support 2FA, at least to my knowledge, and they don't have any open source clients. And they do have a pretty solid, what claims to be no log policy, but they're also missing a warrant canary. And I just feel like they really lag behind in some other services. Um, if you'll take a look at CyberGhost and how it does on our VPN chart. So um, again, I, I personally also just didn't have a good experience with CyberGhost because we used to have an affiliate plan with them, which um, I wanted removed and deleted. And I've contacted their customer support probably like 10, I don't know, at 10, but at least several different times. And I reached out to the affiliate manager. I reached out to their general contact page. I reached out to everything to get that affiliate account shut down and they refused to respond to me. And I also added them on Twitter, nothing. So I don't know, maybe if I keep complaining, someday they'll get my affiliate affiliate account deleted. Affiliate account? Affiliate account deleted. Okay, the next one is Azir VPN. And Azir VPN for me aligns very well with Air VPN. Um, I guess it, it's fitting. You got the A, the, the VPNs that start with A and the A tier. Um, but Azure VPN, I don't have too much personal experience with. So this is based on kind of the data that I've seen on the chart, um, which essentially is they're based out of Sweden. And they do have some nice things like they support Monero and they have only first party servers, which is really awesome. In fact, they're like the first VPN on this chart that only has first party servers, which isn't a deal breaker or anything for other VPNs. It's just one really cool thing that I did want to mention about Azure VPN. Um, I will say they are missing some kind of core features um, that I would like to see in other VPNs, which is why it's an A tier. In fact, I'm kind of on the fence about it being A or B. So I'm like, um, but I'll start with putting in A tier and see how things are looking uh, as we go on. And IPVanish is kind of in the same place here as CyberGhost in my book. Um, again, like these providers will probably be fine if you use CyberGhost, IPVanish, or we're going to talk about Express and all these other providers down the road, but um, you're going to be fine. They're not going to kill you. You're not going to wake up and your entire life uh, just melted before your eyes. Um, but I just think from a digital rights perspective, you can do a lot better than these providers, but these providers will allow you to connect to a VPN server somewhere else, and it's still going to provide you some benefit most likely. Um, and yeah, um, I will say that, but not a big fan of IP vanish, um, especially after the whole, like, they kept logs on a user thing, um, which was handled very weirdly. And ever since then, I'm just not a huge fan of them. But they did take some proactive steps to make this better and help regain a little bit of trust in the community. Um, ExpressVPN is also just kind of going to go in this C territory. Um, similar reasons, I believe CyberGhost and Express are actually owned by the same company. Um, and so that's something a lot of people don't know is that a lot of these VPN companies are owned by just a few VPN companies. And I'm actually going to show you um, a little article and I'll leave that linked below for all of you to dig into that and how a lot of the VPNs you've heard of are actually owned by similar companies and you're not really getting anything different. And they're all kind of equally 
mid <laughs> for a lot of these providers. And we'll talk about the good providers as we keep going here. Now, perfect privacy, I'm really mixed. I think I'm gonna put it in the B tier just because they have a good reputation, but I will say they're missing some things, kind of like Azir though. And I'm kind of, I think I'm gonna move Azir to the B tier just because they're both missing audits. Um, they both don't have 2FA. Again, um, if there's anything I get wrong with a particular service, please let me know. And also if I got something wrong, it probably means our data on our chart is wrong, which is again, all open source. Um, and so you can either directly contribute to that and get something fixed or you can leave a comment and I'll try to correct anything but I feel like with perfect privacy they don't do anything necessarily wrong but I feel like there's still a lot of room for growth I'd like to see 2FA I'd like to see maybe something like diskless servers I'd like to see open source clients I'd like to see some audits I'd like to see a transparency report um, those are the kind of things that I feel like are missing from perfect privacy but they don't have um, like a bad reputation so to speak rise up VPN is a very interesting one and this is gonna be a little bit of a hot take but I'm gonna put this in eight tier so a lot of people might have not have heard rise up VPN and that's for a very good reason to be honest which is it's an entirely free vpn provider um but it's all open source and it runs on a project called leap and leap is a way to essentially ensure that the server code is matching um, what it's supposed to be. It's a way to add transparency to the whole VPN world, which is really nice. I will say though, the reason why it's a hot take is it will be probably very slow. It's only free, there is no paid experience. And so your only option is a slow free VPN experience, but I do trust them a lot and it's a great organization and they're one of the best digital rights organizations that I've seen and they do a lot of great work. So go, good job, rise up. Again, kind of limited support, kind of niche use case, but it's the kind of thing where if it works for you, it could actually work really well. Here we go, we're gonna have the big boy now, NordVPN, okay. Um, I'm going to put Nord in C along with the other like conglomerates, to be honest. I feel like they're all kind of the same though. Like none of them, uh, Nord has had several scandals now, which I don't think like in the long run necessarily make it completely untrustworthy. It's just, I don't know why you'd go with Nord when you have options that haven't had those scandals at this point. And we used to be a big Nord channel before like more and more scandals started coming out. And because they do on the surface get a lot of things right. Have a warrant canary, they don't keep logs. They have even some diskless servers. Um, and they just overall, they have 2FA, they have audits. And they overall like actually do some quality things um, that are somewhat impressive. And on top of that, they're one of the biggest companies. And so they have a lot of good infrastructure, similar to people like CyberGhost and ExpressVPN. They're gonna have a lot of servers um, all around the world. So you're never going to run out of like VPN service to access but like you can do better, like you deserve better. And I feel that despite Nord getting a lot of things right, I just feel like from a digital rights perspective, there are so many better options than Nord from a protection perspective, if I were to say. Okay, Proton VPN. I am so conflicted about Proton between S and A tier. Hear me out. I think from a digital rights perspective, it's S tier. From a usability perspective, it's like between S and A. So I think if I'm between S and A for just one of them, I do think as of right now, I'm putting it in S tier. Um, so it's all open source, very audited from a very trustworthy company. Um, and they do a lot of things right from the protection perspective. I'm just a little upset about the usability. It's missing some features now that other providers that we'll talk about have that actually can make you more safe, more secure, more private. And I'm also just not super happy with Proton VPN's clients, um, especially their Linux client. In fact, now that I'm talking about my issues with Proton VPN, I think I'm like eh, um, A tier kind of status here, um, just because I feel like it's very neglected. Proton um, juggles a lot of projects, and I feel like Proton VPN is not one of the ones that gets a lot of attention. And I feel like, uh, I don't know, I just feel like the usability could be better of Proton VPN, and so I'm gonna put it in the A tier, but. I think the quality of the protection you're getting with Proton is awesome. And the real selling point of Proton VPN is if anybody here is using Proton Mail or they're already in the Proton ecosystem, you might already be paying for Proton VPN. Also, Proton VPN has a free plan as well. So like, it's pretty nice. I'll actually leave a Proton VPN affiliate link in a description. We have one. Um, I'll also leave the standard one too because we have a transparency thing where if we use an affiliate link, we also include the standard link. Um, so I'll leave both of those. If you are interested in Proton, um, I do use Proton for certain things um, and that is a pretty good service. But again, I'm mixed on it. So um, I do put it in my A tier, but it is overall pretty good service. All right, and now I think this is like hands down an S tier for me, um, iVPN. It's probably 
as of right now, my favorite VPN provider. I still use them on mobile. I, I'm actually in love with the iVPN mobile clients. Um, they have interactive widgets on iOS. Uh, it's just super clean, super polished. They have really nice features on both iOS and Android. Um, and I love the desktop experience. Uh, they're a very fast provider and they have like some of the safest uh, precautions out of any of the VPNs out there. They support 2FA, they've been audited, everything's open source. They post just freaking amazing blog posts where they straight up say like what we can't do for you and why you shouldn't trust a VPN to do X, Y, Z. So they're very transparent about what a VPN can and can't do, which by the way, I'll talk a little bit more about at the end of the video when it comes to like what you should look for in a VPN and we'll try to kind of compile some of the lessons from this video. But I really love iVPN. I love how transparent they are and they just do such a great job with so many different things. Um, so yeah, big props to iVPN. I'm a huge fan. PIA is also kind of a hot take for me because I feel like a lot of people like PIA because on the surface, they actually do a lot of things right. Um, I believe all their clients are open source. Um, I believe they've been audited. Um, they actually have some really neat features that I think really do speak to how they are trying. But I just don't really trust the company personally and that's not something that's reflected on like our tools or anything like that i just don't trust the company it's owned by another massive vpn company um but i do feel like they are actually better than the other ones in terms of the features they offer if it might be very similar to nord i'd say um so i'm kind of mixed between b and c tier for this but i i, I think i might put pia and b tier um i don't know i'm, I'm a little conflicted about it to be honest um I'll keep it in C tier for now and I'll decide as we go. All right, now we're gonna move to Surfshark. And honestly, even before I started this, when I was downloading the logos for this tier list, I already said, well, wherever I put Nord, I'll just put Surfshark because they're they're the same company and they have very similar features, very similar vibes. And there are some differences between them, don't get me wrong, but like they're, they're gonna be the same. Like no matter where I move, each of them, they're gonna be following each other. Torgard's interesting. I got a lot of comments about what, what I think about Torgard. Um, I'm not a huge fan of Torgard. Um, I'm going to probably put it with the rest of them. I feel like TorGuard, it's based in the U.S., which has some jurisdiction concerns, as does Rise Up. But again, um, the, where TorGuard doesn't really excel is I don't believe they have open source clients. Uh, they don't have a transparency report. They don't have a warrant canary. They kind of get into weird legal fights, which no one seems to understand. I don't really understand how you sue the wrong company, but they did that. Um, and they also copied a competing service extension, which was kind of crappy, but like, I don't know. With all that said, I've heard a lot of people say good things about the features provided by TorGuard. I don't think it's anything that's exclusive to that. And I think a lot of these other providers here um, are going to have similar features. So, all right, Molvad VPN, definitely another S tier VPN. Um, I actually use Molvad on desktop. Some of you might've caught recently how I've been using Molvad within TailScale because Molvad now has direct integration with TailScale, which allows me to connect to my NAS, which is like my home storage um, with Molvad at the same time with NextDNS. So if you wanna see that video in my configuration with that, definitely check out that video. I'll leave a card and stuff like that. But big fan of Molvad, just like iVPN. I think they're both kind of pushing the envelope on what's possible with digital rights when it comes to a VPN in terms of how little data they can collect. In fact, I'd say Molvad has taken this the furthest when it comes to just how little information they can collect about each person they, to the point where they're actually eliminating features from their VPN that other providers just have never done before just for the sake of like restricting the amount of information they can collect about users. I think the whole Molvad approach is if they can't collect any if they don't collect any information about their users, they're not able to hand over or um, in any way jeopardize their data. So um, I have mad respect for Molvad VPN. So technically right now on desktop, I'm using Molvad and on my phones and mobile devices, I'm using iVPN. And I'm just happy because I get to benefit kind of like the best of both worlds, I think, between these two top providers in my book. Tunnel Bear is kind of just another like down here. I don't, I don't know what's going to separate C and D. So I'm putting just everything that's kind of like meh in C and that kind of goes for Viper VPN as well. Um, and then I'm Windscribe. I'm going to put Windscribe as A tier. You know, now that I'm looking at this, I think, okay. All right, let, let me quickly give you the breakdown on Windscribe. Um, Windscribe, I am a fan of. Um, I do think that there are a lot of things I enjoy about Windscribe. Um, it's hard for me to recommend it over iVPN, Molvad, and ProtonVPN, but I do appreciate Windscribe's honesty. 
Um, they had a server incident where there was an exploit on one of their servers, uh, which people might have remembered when that happened, and they were very transparent about patching that issue, and I actually loved their transparency and how they dealt with it. I loved how they also exposed other providers who had this issue, and I also just love the feature set of Winscribe. They have a lot of neat features, and they really try to push on the feature side of things, I feel. Um, and they also have a pretty generous free plan as well. Um, and just for transparency, so IVPN, Molvad do not have any affiliate links whatsoever. Winscribe got rid of their affiliate program. Proton does have one, which we have, and I'll leave a link to that in the description. Um, and then there are other ones, like AirVPN might have one, but I don't think we have that affiliate account anymore. And all the other ones we don't have either, even if they have them. Um, we just we only have like affiliate plans for like the top ones in our book. So um, with that said, let's actually start finally sorting this. And so I think I'm gonna move Rise Up down one. And between, I can't pick between these two. I'm gonna try to be like, on the further left is better maybe within each tier. Um, I think I'm gonna move Windscribe here, Proton there, and then Air VPN. So um, that's like, those are my top ones there. Between IVPN and Mulvad, I can't decide. I think they're, they just both have a lot of good things going for them. And then in the B tier, ah. Uh, I'm gonna say like AdGuard and Azir. It's it's tough. I'm gonna say Azir just because it's an actual VPN. And then you have AdGuard and then Rise Up and then Perfect Privacy. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna go with that. I'm gonna lock that in. Okay, from here, it's gonna be hard to separate the kind of like not great services in the first place. Perfect Privacy is gonna move down a notch. Gosh, I'm like, I'm really struggling to kind of distinguish these providers. I kind of just wanna like get rid of the D tier. Because honestly, that's how I feel about this. Can I do that? Yeah, I'm going to do that. All right, I, I lied. I'm not doing a D tier. I feel like these all are just kind of on the same playing field. Um, and that's not to say that, like, they're necessarily all bad. I just think they're all necess like they're all kind of on the same playing field and they're all kind of chasing the same target audience of just kind of like standard users who just want a VPN to connect to. Um, and they'll get maybe some privacy and security protections, assuming the providers are all telling the truth on the protection that they're offering them. Um, and they'll be able to connect to different servers around the world, perhaps a lot of servers, because all of these seem to be gravitating towards like a more mainstream audience. Um, but I'd say if you want something with more protection, then you like elevate above that. And then you start looking at like these B, A and S tier VPNs. Um, and I really, I'm actually pretty confident in locking in this, this system right here. I think that these are all kind of just like, they all have like minor pros and cons. Um, in terms of like which ones have diskless RAM servers, um, which ones have first party servers, which ones um, which ones have audits, which ones have transparency reports. It's kind of just a mixed bag and they all kind of just trade blows in things that I think kind of ignore the big elephant in the room, which is like they're just not really pushing the envelope on digital rights in general. And they're not really pushing the envelope on this privacy and security features. Um, and I did want to throw an honorable mention here, which is you always have the option to use the Tor and the Tor browser and anything like Hunix, Tails and whatnot as an alternative to VPNs. Um, it does accomplish something a bit different than VPNs, but if you're looking for digital rights and like Mac safety and anonymity, I'd be looking more at those tools rather than necessarily just a VPN. And so that's kind of my take. I don't think these are hot takes for the digital rights community. I think a lot of people are already kind of on board with these VPNs, but I hope it gave you all something to think about. And just a little thing, what to look for in a VPN. I personally look for open source clients. I look for honest marketing where they tell you exactly what they can and can't protect against. Um, I look for a VPN that doesn't invest all their money into marketing and advertising and affiliate plans. Um, it's nice if they have one, I guess, it's fine, but like, I don't want something like Nord where all their money is going towards just YouTube sponsorships as a YouTuber. Um, so that's something that like I'm thinking about as well. I'm also looking at things like their history, which are chart links to, by the way, you can link to the history and it'll show you like any inst instances or any server breaches or stuff like that, that you can look into. But yeah, those are kind of things I'd be taking a look at if I were you. Um, and again, if you really want more of an objective take on this, check out our chart at techlore.tech slash VPN. I'll leave a link to that in a description. And there's so many good tools that you can use to compare VPNs. It's literally just objective data for the most part. So um, you can just very clearly uh, see what providers offer what and what they don't. And then you can actually compare directly side by side. And you can even use the comparison tool um, to see them listed out uh, side by side. Um, we spent a lot of time on this. It's all open source. If you catch a mistake or something, um, you can contribute to the chart. And there's instructions on how to do that down below as well. So. 
Um, that's all I have to say. Um, if you like this video, definitely share it around. Um, especially, um, like, I don't know, maybe share it with a, v like a YouTuber VPN who might not know that like the VPN that they're sponsoring them is like maybe not the best one. Um, so just something to think about. And I hope you all found some value in this. It was just kind of a fun video to push out. And I'll see you all next time on Tech Lord. Don't forget to get subscribed if you want any more kind of like VPN, but more like digital rights type of content going forward. And oh yeah, that's it. That's all I gotta say. Um, thank you again to our patrons. Join our Patreon at patreon.com slash techlore. And we'll see you next time on Tech Lore.